Hey everyone and welcome back to another Tuesday tip where in this video we're going to be covering how to install a gyro brake setup on your BMX bike. This is something that's been requested more times than I can even count at this point and it's taken me years to get to this but we're finally here. We're going to teach you guys how to put a gyro on your bike and then there's going to be videos about how to dial them in and all of those things. But first watch the video in one of these corners about everything that you're going to need for a gyro brake cable setup. And once you have all of those pieces, come back to this one and follow along with the journey. The first step to installing your gyro brake cable setup, starting from the top to the bottom, is your brake lever. Let's get into it. So I've got the Odyssey mono lever here in size medium, and to install it onto our handlebars, all we gotta do is loosen this bolt up all the way until it gives you access to the hinge. Some brake levers don't have this hinge, so you may have to take your grip and bar end off, but if you have this hinge, you're in luck. You just take the bolt out to give you access to it, place it over the bars, and then put the bolt back in. We're not gonna worry yet about exactly where it's at because the bike's up on the stand. We can't get a accurate idea of exactly where we might want to put it. Then we're going to take our shout out to Park Tool Allen wrenches here, and we're just going to snug this up somewhere where we think we may want it. Exact position doesn't quite matter yet. And if you're already pretty familiar with what a brake lever looks like, you probably already noticed that I was missing my bail adjuster, and that is because we need it out for the next step. And that is installing our upper cables. If you watched the what is required for a gyro brake setup, you know already that we have two different types of cables, an upper and a lower cable that we need to install on the bike. First comes the upper cable, which there are several different types of. There's these dual upper cables like I have here, as well as a single to dual upper cable, which goes from one cable to two cables down at the gyro and then there's a couple other kinds that are proprietary to specific companies products but with this i have my own custom cables that i made up here and we actually have to take the barrel adjuster out and put it through this cable guide here that allows us to have this dual upper cable setup, as you can see here. And this is all in my brake playlist. There's a lot of videos in there for my specific gyro cable setup. And installing these upper cables works just like installing any other brake cable set. We take the cable end, we put it into the slot that is there for it, then we pull it around, and in this case, I thread my barrel adjuster back in, but usually you'll have this slot in the barrel adjuster aligned with the slot in the a nut that goes on the barrel adjuster and you'll slot your cable through there and then you'll tighten things down if you need to or adjust from there. And we have the upper cables installed into the lever. So the next step in the process is the part where we actually install the gyro onto the bike. But before we can do that, we got to take off the bars and stem, obviously. And to do that, it's pretty basic stuff here, but we're going to go through the BMX 101 steps for all of you out there who are beginners doing this for the very first time. We're going to take our stem off by loosening the stem bolts, which I've already done on both sides. Then we're gonna loosen our compression cap above the stem. And while we're doing this, we're gonna keep a hold of our forks to save any unfortunate accidents. We're going to take off our compression cap, set it aside, and we're gonna slide our bars off, keeping a hold of our forks now, because that is where they will fall if you don't have a hold of them. And then we're gonna take our gyro we're going to put it onto the bike. If you have one with the set screws in it, pay attention to where those are at because you may want them in a specific spot. That is up to you. And after we have the gyro on here, we're going to need another piece here, and that is the gyro plate. And we're gonna slide that onto the fork. And one thing that you really have to pay attention to with this, because when you're adding the gyro plate, you're essentially adding a spacer to your fork, which means you're taking up more of your fork, and that means that your fork goes less up into your stem. And how far your fork goes into your stem is very important. You want it to at least be up to that top bolt. If it's not, you wanna take spacers out. But with a gyro, you also wanna have the most spacers that you can to give you the most brake travel here with the gyro. So that's something you definitely want to pay attention to in all of this. And then once you get your gyro plate onto there, we can put our bars back on. We can replace our compression cap. And once that's threaded in there, we can re-tighten everything up. If you want to get it re-centered at this point, you can with your stem and your fork. And then we can move forward with the install. 
With that, we're going to be tightening our barrel adjusters that are on our upper cables into our gyro plate. That is the next step here. We're gonna do that with both sides. And if we're assuming that this is a brand new brake install, you're going to want to make sure that you don't have adjustment already set into these barrel adjusters. That is something that is key here because you're setting up your brake travel with the barrel adjusters and how everything's set up. And we'll get into that in a little bit, but we want to set ourselves up for the quickest and easiest brake install. So let's get these barrel adjusters tightened into here. And then next up comes installing the lower cables, which as you can see here are already onto my bike because with my custom setup, I can't actually take these barrel adjusters out because of certain situations. But with that, you're gonna be putting your gyro tabs into your frame, which I do have B-roll of to show you guys how to do it. They should have come with your frame whenever you got it. And it's in the everything required for a gyro setup video if you watch to that. And once you get your bottom cables on, which I have here, you're gonna to have to worry about your bottom cable guide on your frame. So let's get you a little closer for that. So if you're using a dual lower gyro cable setup like this one, you're gonna need some kind of London mod here. And that is simply a modification to take this from a single cable guide, which is on pretty much every brake frame that exists, to a dual cable guide. Some frames do come with the dual cable guide pre-built into the frame, but you will already know about that. So with that, I have my London mod here. And to install this, you're simply going to put this bolt or take this bolt if it's already in out. I have some custom spacers here. They're just brake pad spacers, but they are there. We're gonna slide this over the bolt Put my spacers back on and then replace the nut on the bolt from here we're going to get this centered and then we're going to tighten the bolt up and while i'm doing this here it's worth noting that there are several different types of lower cables as well and which ones you have are going to dictate your brake setup so this is something i'm not going to go over in this video specifically just because there's several different kinds and we don't have the time today to do that but i can in the future if you guys would like me to so you can see here we've got this set up now we need to move back to the front to get things situated with the gyro back to the front of the bike here you can see we don't have any ends in our gyro yet most lower gyro cables have similar ends on the top part here and most gyros have similar bottoms to them to where you're literally just slotting the cable into the bottom like so very self-explanatory in order to install that part and most upper cables will have normal ends on them as well that you just slot into the top part of the gyro but i have custom upper cables which i need these set screws to tighten into so we're just going to time lapse through this real quickly because this part will not apply to most of you One thing you do want to keep in mind here with your upper cables and their adjustment is that you don't want the gyro to hit the gyro plate while you're pulling the brakes because if that happens before your brakes are fully pulled, that means that your brakes are not going to be fully pulled. They're never going to get there because the gyro hit the plate and they can't go up any further. So with that in mind, you want to keep this gyro as low as you possibly can to give yourself as much travel when you're setting things up. That will give you optimal braking so that when you pull your brakes, like I'm about to, you can see because there's nothing attached, it just hits the gyro. And if this happens before our brakes are all the way against the rim, then we're going to get no braking power or limited braking power. So that's definitely something to keep in mind. And moving forward here, we can move to installing the brakes themselves. So when it comes to installing the brake arms, there's a couple things that you need to pay attention to. There's a top brake arm and a bottom brake arm. The bottom is very obvious and the top is very obvious and they are very obvious when you hold them in relation to each other, especially if you switch them, you can see which is supposed to be which. And if you're working with brand new brakes, the way they come in the box is the way that they're supposed to be on the bike. 
The way that they come in the box with their springs are also the way they're supposed to be. The spring side matters. There's two different springs with your brakes, one for one side and one for the other. And if you switch them on accident, you're going to be coiling the spring in the opposite direction that it's supposed to in order to make your brake pull work correctly. So pay attention to that whenever you're getting new brakes too and keep the spring on the side that it comes on whenever you get them. If you're getting used brakes, you could end up with two of the same spring, which means that one is going to be coiling the wrong way. And that's something that you probably don't want. It will work for a period of time, but it's not going to work well and you're not gonna have the best brakes that you could. So with that, another tip here is that putting a dab of lube like this PolyLube 1000 from Park Tool onto your brake mount will make your brakes feel that much better in the end. So now let's install the brakes. All right, so let's get our dab of poly lube onto the brake mount here. Then we're going to take our brake mount, spring assembly and all. As you can see, the spring goes into a slot on the cap as well as into a hole on the mount. And we're going to slide the whole entire thing up onto the brake mount because that makes it easier to keep it all together and keep it lined up whenever we put the bolt in. It's kind of a pain and difficult whenever you try to do this with it individually. It's a little bit harder to do. So if you keep it all together while you're putting it on there the first time, you don't have to take more time to line things up and get it all figured out. And just like that, it's on there and everything is good. So we're gonna take our other side here we're going to do the exact same thing. We're gonna take our dab of poly lube, put it onto the brake mount. We're gonna take our cap and spring assembly here, make sure it's all lined up. We're just gonna slide the whole thing onto the brake mount. Okay, and it's at this point that we're ready to put our brake pads onto our brake mounts if they're not already. Usually when you buy brand new brakes, they come with brake pads on them. And at this point, you just have to adjust them. So it's pretty self-explanatory, but you're gonna put your brake pad onto the mount. And once you have it on there, you're gonna wanna make sure that you line it up with the rim. You're gonna try to line it up as best you can parallel to the rim. And doing this before we set our spring tension makes it a lot easier to put it on there and tighten it where you want it to be once the brakes are pulled. So we're, we're literally just pushing the brake arm so that the pad is against the rim and then tightening it right there. And then we can kind of tell where it's going to end up whenever we move our brakes in and out. We're gonna do that for both sides. And this is the part where we adjust the spring tension of the brakes. This is how hard or soft our brakes are going to pull as well as how much tension is on each side, depending upon what type of cable setup you have here. Sorry about that, dropped the poly lube and it hit the tripod. So with that, spring tension is kind of a complex subject and it's something that I've covered in many videos. So I'm gonna put a link in an info card in the corner right here for you guys to check out to do your spring tension because it's something that is just going to be too extensive to cover in this video. I'll just tell you that your brake spring tension is the heart of your brake pull and it dictates how your brakes feel whenever you pull them. So watch that video that was in the info card as well as in the playlist in the description down below and get it right. And for now, we're just going to snap to having the spring tension adjusted. There we go, we got our spring tension set up here as you can see, and the next step in the process is connecting our lower gyro cables to our brake arms. And the method to do this varies depending upon which type of lower cables you have. If you have a dual lower gyro cable set up like this one, you're gonna have two different cable ends, just like you can see I have here, that go into each side of your brake arm. But if you have a single to double lower cable setup, you're gonna have some sort of straddle cable setup here, which means you're gonna have a straddle cable similar to this one. It goes into a cable hanger here on your cable, or you're gonna have something kind of like this from a couple different companies that is a proprietary setup that works with a lot of different brakes. But either way, how you do this and how you adjust where your cables are at varies so significantly that I don't wanna go super in depth on it in this video. But if you want me to in a future one, I possibly can. But with that, I will give you guys a quick rundown on either method so that you can kinda of get your way through it. So the first part of this applies to no matter which type of cable setup you have. You're gonna tighten your barrel adjusters on your whole entire setup, every single one, as far in as they will go. 
everywhere from down here at the London Mod or Cable Guide to the gyro tabs to the gyro plate or your brake lever, tighten them all the way down. Then what you're gonna do is you're gonna loosen this bottom one, whether it's one or two, you're gonna loosen it just a little bit. If you have two, you're gonna do it on both sides. If you just have one, you're gonna do it in the center. And then from there, what you're gonna do is if you have a dual lower gyro cable set up, you're going to get a NARP onto your cable. A NARP is this piece right here. You're gonna slide it onto your cable and you're gonna put it into your brake arm. Obviously I have it all the way set up here so it's finished, but I will talk you through this one. So you're gonna get your NARP in there. Everything's all the way set up. You're going to pull your brake arm as far as it will go against your rim. Then you're gonna take your excess slack and you're gonna pull on it at the guide. And then you're gonna pull on it again at the NARP and you're gonna make sure that it pulls all of the slack through the NARP so that everything is as tight as it will go. Then you're gonna take your Allen wrench and you're gonna tighten that NARP down. So what that means is when you loosen that, the only adjustment that you're gonna have is this little bit. Your brake pad should be close to your rim here so that when you loosen this up, or tighten it rather into the London mod, <clears throat> it gives you a little bit of adjustment there. And when you do that on both sides, your brake pull should be similar and it should be enough to where you can adjust it out to where you like it from here. If you want more brake pull, you want a longer brake pull, loosen this up more to give yourself some more slack once it's tightened in with a straddle cable setup is very, very similar. So you're either gonna have this cable and a hanger or you're gonna have something like this. We're just gonna do this because it's the exact same thing. You're gonna take this one out of here so we can show you guys. We're gonna put each side into our brake arms and say we had a single to lower cable setup. We're going to take the end and we're gonna put it into here Try and get this out of the way so you can see a little better. And then we're gonna do the exact same thing, but here we're going to pull our brakes as tight as they will go. And then we're gonna pull the slack out of this cable as much as we possibly can. Again, this is already loosened out a little bit so that we can tighten whatever is here down. And then whenever we loosen this, it's gonna go out a little bit and it's gonna give us our brake pull. That is the easiest way to get it close from the start. And at this point, all that's left in the process is tinkering with things to dial your brakes in. Things like cable tidying, like putting a wrap around your frame right here, as well as just adjusting things to make your brakes feel as good as possible. You may have to adjust with a dual lower cable setup either side of the barrel adjuster because you have two different cable lengths here, they may not pull exactly centered. Or if you have a straddle cable set up, one brake spring might be tighter than the other and it might be pulling this straddle cable like this. You may have to tighten or loosen them to center it out so that your brake pads hit the rim at the exact same time. And this is stuff that just requires tinkering and dialing in. And it's something I feel like I really can't teach too much of other than giving you little tips here and there because at this point in my life I feel like I just do it all based on intuition. I go based on how it feels and what I think needs to happen and I just adjust things and mess with it until it feels good to me. So that's what you're going to have to do. You're going to have to adjust barrel adjusters, move things around, maybe adjust your brake pads because they're not hitting flush the way that you want them to things like that. So I hope I did a good enough job explaining things to get you guys to that point. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments down below or send me a message on Instagram. I am always happy to help. And with that, I've got an entire playlist right here devoted to BMX brakes and dialing them in that hopefully will answer any of your questions. If not, like I said, send me a message and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. And if you guys are new here or you haven't yet, hit the subscribe button down below while you're leaving a comment so that hopefully we'll see you tomorrow for another one. I want to thank you guys all for being here and watching. Get out there and do a break trick, and we'll see you tomorrow. Goodbye.